Mr. President, may I present the Prime Chairman, Richard McLeod, with the Tribal Band of Chippewa Indians, Mrs. Judy McLeod, and the Escort Committee. Let the committee be received. Tribal Chairman Richard McLeod of the Turtle Mountain Band of Chippewa is here today for his address on the tribal and state relationship. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And thank you for the honor of addressing the state of North Dakota's tribes. I know we have some chairmen here, so I'd like to introduce them. Chairman Murphy, standing Rock, would you please stand?
Imagine, imagine this economic development existing within the, our reservations, right with potential and competitiveness that mirrors the state and national averages. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor, North Dakota has the lowest unemployment in the nation. North Dakota also ranks as the state with the best economy. They have done a good job. North Dakota's population is booming. <coughs> California and New York are losing people. As you know, this state's prosperity has a lot to do with the economic development programs assisting their economic growth and job opportunity for all the residents. And perhaps just a little bit of that well. <laughs> So while the other states are floundering in debts and deficits, North Dakota has a balanced budget. While Washington, D.C. is trying to deal with its $16 trillion debt, North Dakota has stashed away surplus funds for rainy days. This stable and flourishing economy, especially the conditions and strategies that made it possible, is what we need on our reservations. I don't have to stand here today and read the statistics we all know where Indian country stands in the area of economic development and employment. We need the state to share in its prosperity and to help the North Dakota reservations help themselves. We are asking for a helping hand, not a handout. And we ask the state with the best economy of all 50 states to fund a comprehensive workforce and a business-specific training program that enable but don't limit our potential. We are asking for your help and cooperation to fund new training on reservations, occupational trainings that will help our people gain employment and be an asset to their employers' management training so that local businesses will survive and prosper so those newly trained employees will have jobs to go to jobs that are not government jobs, but jobs that are long term. Our tribal leaders must play a role in this too. We have to make policies that encourage investment on the reservations. We need to do what it takes to make an environment friendly to the businesses. We've been looking at entering a memorandum of understanding with the North Dakota Secretary of State regarding the Uniform Commercial Code. By working with the state in ways like this, we can develop a friendlier business environment that attracts investments from the outside of the reservations. I have pledged to bring more transparency to our tribe's government. This is important, not just so that people have more faith in their tribal government, but also so that the outside businesses feel more comfortable in investing in our reservations. I encourage other tribes and the state to do what they can in this way as well. I've said, we are not asking for a hand up. And not a hand out. These are the devil. We're not asking for a hand out, we're asking for a hand up, sorry. And we want a partnership with the state, not charity. So what would North Dakota get out of this investment in Indian country? Imagine this. Indian country with an unemployment rate that matches the state that's a prospering economy that not only has enough jobs for our tribal members, but jobs for its non-tribal neighbors. As a return on its investment, this state will see the prosperity share decrease, the dependency on welfare, and other dependent social programs. Today, one quarter of North Dakota's welfare payments come to my reservation. Imagine a turtle mountain economy that doesn't require 25% of North Dakota's welfare funds. Imagine. This happening with all the reservations in the state. The newfound prosperity that can be reached in Indian country will benefit the businesses all over the state. Imagine decreased crime rates and most of all decreasing the F word financial deficit. Now I stirred your imagination and not so subtly anticipated your generosity. Let's continue with how to expand our medical facilities to fight diseases such as cancer, diabetes, 
and hypertension. Increase housing funding to renovate existing homes to make them warm and livable during these cold North Dakota winters, as well as building new homes for the 16% of our families who are homeless. Imagine rebuilding our roads so when a person drives down it, they don't have to get a beeline every 300 miles. And funding to increase law enforcement to make our reservations a safe and happy place to live. Our elders are especially hit hard by these adversities. We value our elders by taking care of them. And I ask you to help us to do that. So keep imagining, if you will, funds to buy back land. Yes, I said buy back land that was given away so we can expand our reservation and provide more opportunity for our people to become landowners, to increase farming and agriculture, and funds to restore, beautify, and develop our natural resources to attract tourism. So let's continue to use our imagination and generosity where it's never taken us before. Indian game. We tribal leaders need to adhere to the principles of good government including transparency and agency accountability. We need to work together with the state to promote fiscal responsibility, to operate with consistency and clarity to ensure fairness in our gaming compacts. We need to respect the capabilities and responsibilities of each sovereign tribal nation in order to fully promote tribal economic development. Self-sufficiency and strong tribal governments and a fair gaming compact house with just that. I just recently signed a new gaming compact with Governor Dowdenville. And I believe we both can see that the tribal gaming not only helps the tribes, but it also helps the economy of the state. We may get the jobs from the casinos, but the dollars generated there get spent all over North Dakota. Yet the other partnership between the tribes and the state where everyone wins. Now open your imagination and your wallets just a little bit more and look at these young people that I brought with you. They are our future. And only 26% of Native American students who graduate are college ready. Only 23% of our Native American students have job ready the skills when they are leaving high school. Over half the Native American students will not graduate from high school. And these are scary statistics. It's our fundamental obligation as leaders to ensure that children in our communities have the best possible education, promoting lifelong skills that are competitive in society. High quality learning environments are compromised of several elements, such as a strong curriculum, employing certified and skilled teachers, and keeping our standards of education high in order to have the proper tools and fundamentals to teach our children properly. We need our college and universities to implement an array of academic and vocational programs that will fulfill our children's dreams to become doctors, lawyers, business owners, teachers, entrepreneurs, researchers, and yes, senators, governors, tribal chairmen and some may president of the United States. Tribal colleges have done a fantastic job with this, and we need, we, and we need that to continue to expand. We ask you to keep this in mind in the coming days when the North Dakota Association of Tribal Colleges submits a bill to the state legislature to fund a special two-year initiative in workforce development. We've been blessed in the journal models and that we've been able to build a new high school in Dalkin and also in New Ojibwe Indian School. Other reservations haven't been as fortunate. All of our educational facilities must be kept updated, either through remodeling existing buildings or building new schools as needed. Our classrooms need to be equipped with the latest technology. <laughs> our education system needs to equip our students to thrive in the global economy, and most importantly, it needs to promote a safe and healthy environment for every student. So how can, how can we imagine our future being prosperous without investing in education? 
When I heard, hear the word imagine, <coughs> I hear the song imagined by John Lennon. You may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us and the world will be as one. So with this global economy and with other states and countries continuing to develop and improve, we cannot afford to barely to occupy a seat because it can take years to catch up with the rest of the world. If our prosperous state cannot find it in its heart to invest in economic development, affordable quality housing, an effective healthcare system, and an assistance in developing high quality educational systems on our reservations, then our imagination is not developed and we rob our children of theirs. So just imagine what we can do if we do work together. Language and thank you.